Art of the Rhyme here from Get Over It Media. Um, the accusation is that the Bible copies stories from other civilizations and religions. My typical response to that is that, do you mean like the flood? Now, I want you to notice that every ancient civilization has a story about the flood. So first, we have to ask ourselves, why is that the case? Is the flood a true, historical, universal event that impacted the entire globe? Or is it simply a myth from the ancient world? Now, what is the probability that a disparate people group and cultures spread across the globe would all develop a flood story and it somehow not come from a shared source? What about the other stories that are in the Bible? Are those stories copied, borrowed, or outright plagiarized? Or are they speaking about commonly shared historical events, but from a different perspective? First, let's start by providing context. It is a scientific fact that all of mankind shares a common ancestry. We all come from two people. No matter where a people group is on the planet today, no matter how varied our physical features have become down through the ages, no matter how varied our cultural and ideological beliefs, we all come from two people. And not only do we share a common ancestry, but we share a common history if you go back far enough. So then at one time, we also shared common cultural and ideological beliefs. There was a point in time in which there was a single pervasive culture and belief system that dominated the entire planet. Now, of course, we know that culture to be the ancient Kemetic slash Babylonian mystery school system, but I am getting a little bit ahead of myself. As humans, we are created with and for purpose and meaning. Our lives are designed to have both meaning and purpose. So much so that when it is missing, we will go in search of it. Even if we have to manufacture it, we will create meaning out of thin air if we have to. Now, also as humans, we are wired to learn through narrative. We learn best through story. The telling of story is how we have built and maintained family and legacy. It is through the telling of story that we have built cultures and civilizations. The telling of stories is how we have survived as humans. Stories are a survival mechanism for humanity. It is a part of our survival package. It is a part of our survival package, both at the corporate cultural level and the individual level. Again, we are wired to learn through story. So then, history gets passed down through story. Meaning gets passed down through story. Cultural significance gets passed down through story. Listen, identity gets passed down through story. Story is also how we establish identity. That's on both the corporate cultural level and the individual level. Change the story and you change the identity. So then, why wouldn't the greatest book ever written be presented to us in a manner that is consistent with how we are wired. The Bible is told in the form of a narrative. It is told to us as a story. The most well-known and memorable and beloved portions of the Bible are the stories. Now, that doesn't mean that it is a book of mythology or fictional work. Notice that it does not even begin in storybook fashion. For example, it does not begin with the words, 
in a land far, far away, nor once upon a time. It actually begins by placing the creation event into a historical context, just like the flood. The story of Noah is told as an historical event, but it's in the form of a narrative. Yeah. Because we are created with and for purpose and meaning, because we are wired to learn through narrative, so then meaning is best taught and grasped when it is in the form of a story. So with every experience that we have, we will create a story around that experience so as to give that experience meaning. Let me give you an example. Let's say you pass by a coworker and you say, good morning. And they look directly at you, or so you believe. In reality, they're engrossed in their own head. Kids ain't acting right. Spouse ain't acting right. They got bills. They look right through you. And again, they walk past you without saying a word. You are going to create a story around what just happened. Inside your head, you will tell yourself the reason why it happened. And you will do it in the form of a story. Even if you ignore and dismiss the encounter. It's not being significant. Here's what you need to know about these stories that we create. The stories that we tell ourselves and the stories that are told to us. First, when we create a story in our head around our experiences, it will always be in alignment with our prejudices, biases, and presuppositions. There is something called the halo effect, and it will be driving and shaping the narrative. Second point, the stories that we create in our head, we create them both consciously and subconsciously. Now, here's the problem. The subconscious cannot differentiate between fact and fiction, reality and fantasy. So it can't tell if the story you're telling yourself is actually even real. Next point. When we emotionally connect with the story, our body responds as if what is happening in the story is happening to us. This is why we cry at movies. Our subconscious cannot tell that what we are watching isn't real. Also, our body releases chemicals like oxytocin, dopamine, endorphins, etc. So, although the, although the story ain't real, our body and our psyche are being impacted. Again, listen, the story may not be real. However, the impact is. Next point. The greater the impact of the experience, the greater the imprint it makes on us. The greater the imprint, the more central the story becomes to who we are. In other words, the story that I tell myself about what I experienced becomes a part of my core identity. And as previously stated, if you change someone's story, you change who they are. Side, this is why some people will fiercely protect a lie. Again, you change the story, you at least change how someone sees themselves. And you change enough of the story, they may no longer even know who they are. And the story that they tell themselves it is a part of their survival package. But when you threaten the story, you threaten their identity. And depending on how core that story is, you may even be a threat to their existence. This is the reason for homicides. Not the sole reason, but a, a particular reason, especially in domestic violence cases. But again, part of survival package both corporately and individually. So story is how we see ourselves how we see the world around us, and our place in the world. Now, bear in mind, these stories that we tell ourselves, we do it both consciously and subconsciously. And again, the subconscious cannot tell whether it is real or not. 
the subconscious is going to respond based upon how strongly it is felt. Now, I'm sure by now, many of us can see where this goes. And as an aside for the Bible readers, think about this question found in the book of Genesis. Who told you that you were naked? Remember, they were always naked. But this time, it's a different naked. A whole separate video. Listen, we have a segment of society that is basing their identity upon how they feel. Even if those feelings are contrary to facts and objective reality. They always start with the words, I feel like. And to make matters even worse, they want the rest of society to conform to their feelings. Again, even if those feelings are contrary to facts and reality itself.